Welcome back to another video. We are now on to myth number 19 from the book, The 100 Myths of Entrepreneurship versus Chainsaw, written by Josh Pearl, Canada's top business consultant. My name is Desmond Soon. So Josh, when we are talking about you know conflict, this topic, uh, we hear a lot of times business owners that have this unrealistic expectation. They, they quit the job because they had a conflict with the boss. Yeah. They thought, if I'm gonna go start my own company, I'll not have any conflict in it. Oh man, yeah. Couldn't that be further from the truth? It's, it's true. I mean, that's a reason why a lot of business owners start a business because they had a dysfunctional relationship yes. with the boss. Right. And they think that business is a conduit to never have those dysfunctional relationship again. It's not. You're going to have more conflict as a yes. business owner than you did as an employee. The only freedom that you have is now you have the ability to not stay perpetually in a dysfunctional relationship. You can move on to better relationships when they turn sour. You don't have to be there. You know, you know when you're an when you're an employee yes. and your boss is dysfunctional, your yep. choice is either leave and not get paid or stay yep. in a dysfunctional relationship and get paid. When you own a business, right, you yes. can move on from the customer. You can fire the customer. Yes. You can move on from the employee. You can move on from the supplier, right? Yes. So you can choose not to, you know, continue on in dysfunctional relationships. But the number of dysfunctional relationships you're going to have is going to increase, increase right? as you grow your business. Hopefully, the duration of those dysfunctional relationships decreases. Yes. Right. But the number of them will increase as you scale. You need more customers. Yeah. You need more employees. You need more suppliers. So you have a great quote here from Tim Ferriss. It says, a person's success in life can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. Yeah. And you also have another quote here from Forbes. The typical manager spends 25 to 40% of their time dealing with conflicts. That's, that's quite a significant amount of time. That's right. Right. Their job is to actually deal with conflicts. It's, it's just as Tim Ferriss says, it's like the number of, you know, the, your success is largely dependent on your ability and willingness to have these difficult conversations. Yes. Right. And so, you know, I want to adjust people's expectations though, because it's not that business owners love conflict. Some yes. people will go all the way out of the business owners just love conflict. That's a, a personality type of it. It's, it's, it's not that at all. In mm -hmm. fact, they're just, willing to have these conversations so in fact that they don't let relationships get out of control right? yeah we've all had that circumstance where something is bothering us yeah we let it bother us mm -hmm. we let it bother us yeah and it gets and that person's behavior usually gets worse yeah. and worse and worse yeah because we don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation but in reality we make we almost reinforce the behavior so the behavior gets worse and worse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so the goal is to have those uncomfortable conversations quicker, yep. not with the goal of having conflict, but with the goal of actually preserving the relationship. Yes. Right? Because ultimately your success in business is going to be one and one loss about your ability to establish win-win relationships. Yes. Right? Yep. So the boss who, you know, is, a, a, you know, uh, the, the previous boss, it's just a completely dysfunctional relationship. They're not looking for a win-win. Yeah. They're just looking for do what I say or I won't pay you. That's right. It's not really a win-win. That's just a game of survival. Right? Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you know, you're not going to have people highly motivated towards a you know, goal and a vision on those terms, right? Yes. So the goal is to have uncomfortable, you know, discussions up front. Yes. So you can start working towards win-win solutions where both people are happy. They feel satisfied. Right? Yeah. But it's hard. Yes because we don't want to do it. And a lot yeah. of times we don't want to do it today. We want to do it tomorrow or the yeah. next day, right? And so we have to make that choice when it's not, I'm not doing this to create conflict. Yeah. I'm actually doing this to perpetuate harmony. Yes. So what, what would you suggest, Josh? I mean, in these videos, we always talk about action steps for entrepreneurs. Um, how do you handle conflicts at the company? Well, you need time, Yes. right? And time is one of the biggest things because you can have, you, know, you can be uncomfortable, but if you don't have time involved to talk to the people, yeah. there's going to be problems. So right? you have to time block out and make sure that you have time blocks to, to deal with uh, situations or, uh, you know, I've, I worked at another company where they had uh, the EOS system, they had the IDS. It was mm -hmm. done every week on Tuesday. We would do an IDS, Identify, Discuss and Solve. Yeah. And we had those uncomfortable conversations as a group yeah. with everyone, Yeah. right? So you know, think about it with customers. Do we have actual time where we can be on the phone mm -hmm. or meet face to face with customers? Right? right. Very few things that you can resolve by email. Normally they're just like routine things, right? Yeah. 
Um, but there's a lot of, there's, there's more things when, when it gets to that kind of uncomfortable stage, usually it's phone calls or meetings. That's right. right. So if we don't have time to have those interactions, we won't resolve it, right? Right. So we need time in our calendar to actually talk with customers, mm -hmm. or someone on your team needs to be able to talk with customers to resolve sticky situations, right? Right. It's the same thing for employees, right? Uh, if we don't have time blocked out to talk with employees, mm -hmm. both as a group and individually, one on one, yeah, you're going to have difficult situations that get worse because yep. they're not course corrected, right? right? So you can end up losing good customers, losing good employees, just because you ignore the relationship, you let it get out of hand, right? right? And it's, it become, you know, when you want someone to move this far, yep. right? To make it good, it's great. But if you let them get this far and this far and this far and this far, and then you ask them to come all, all the, way, the way back over here, yep. and by that time you're asking them to move that far, you're probably so frustrated that you can't do it eloquently. Yeah, right? you can't do it tactfully. You know, you're, the chance that you're going to you know have that win-win relationship it goes down dramatically. Right. Any other extra tips there, Josh? You know, um, let's say there's a conflict with uh, the staff in the in the office, okay? Mm -hmm. um, do you, uh, you know, invite them in to, in, to have a one-on-one -on -one with you? Let's say there's two, two staff. Do you come in and mediate it, or do you encourage them to, to deal with it this themselves? This is a great example, great yes. example, right? Yep. You have to understand what the nature of the, the, the staff conflict. issue is, right? right? Like some, if they're so egregious, you have to step in, right? Yes. But that shouldn't be your initial reaction. Right. Your initial reaction should give them guidance on how to deal with the difficult situation, right? right? So have they actually talked to that person? I mean, it's, right. it's the first question. It's like, yep. if you want people who deal with difficult situations, yes. you know, that doesn't mean you're the one always dealing with the difficult situations, yep. because then you can be dealing with 100% of the difficult situations in the company, and your energy level is just going to tank, right? Correct. Other people have to be able to do that, because if they can't deal with a coworker, how are they gonna deal with a customer? Yes. Right? You're, you're, you're basically coddling someone in, you know, in a reality that doesn't exist, right? First question, you know, what have you done to resolve it? Right? Yes. What are your action steps, right? And most of the time it's nothing. Yep. Almost all the time it's nothing. Yep. And then you ask them, to, you don't have to, it's what could you do? Right? Yep. You know, what do you think will be worth trying? Let them come up with their own explanations, okay? Yep. It's much easier to get them to execute on their own ideas than yours, right? Yes. Sometimes they'll be at a loss and they'll just ask for guidance, right? Yep. That's a you know uh, an upstanding thing to do to give them guidance. But I would say that either a they're going to have some sort of you know uh, proposed resolution. Yep. Or they're going to ask, and both of them are going to sound pretty good. And then you're going to encourage them to do it and then put a time parameter. I was like, okay, I yep. want you to do that this week, and we'll meet back next week and see how it went. Right? Yeah. And so now we're we're tying a time to it, so we're forcing them to do it. Yes. Or else they have to come back into the meeting, yep. and they have to have the uncomfortable conversation saying, I don't try it. So they yep. don't have a way to avoid the uncomfortable situation. They're just choosing which one. So you, you don't go and talk to the other person? I would not. You, know, you, don't, you let them go talk to them, and then come back and give you the feedback of how that went, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And you know, sometimes they'll resolve it. Yep. Sometimes it'll stay the same. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could escalate. Right. right. But at the same time, you've now created an employee who's less afraid to go into difficult situations because they've yep. done it once. Correct. And got experience yep. doing it. And right? you know that that's the culture in the company as well too. Correct. Right. Yeah. Now we know, don't run away from conflicts. We actually address them. That's right. Then they come back in, and yep. at that point, when they come back in, now either they're stuck or mm -hmm. they're looking for feedback. Right. Okay. Even then. Give them more feedback. Yep. This is what to try next week, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you know, stepping in should be your last resort, right? right? You're only stepping in because you think something egregious, not bad. You think something egregious is going to happen between now and yep. the next time that you can follow up, right? Yeah. Um, this should be the you know kind of the realm because even if you do solve it, you probably burnt the relationship with that other person. Yeah. Right. That. These two people are always fighting and they yes. always need mom and dad to bail them out. Right. This, right. They can never work it out on their own, right? Mm. And you might be able to solve it quicker, but now you're the only mechanism to solve problems, right? Yeah. And it's not your highest and best use as a business owner, right? Yeah. So have the time to block off to talk to employees one on one and don't expect uh, you know difficult things to get solved immediately. Yeah. You're just trying to increase the frequency that people are 
having difficult conversations, not to cause stress. Yeah. Some people will have difficult conversations just to cause unnecessary drama over small inconsequential issues, right? Yes. But you're having you're encouraging people to have difficult conversations with the goal of having better, stronger, long-term win-win relationships. Makes a lot of sense. If you found this video helpful and you had some additional comments or questions for us, post in the questions and comments below. We do answer those questions. Also, if you want to get a copy of the book, get in the link below. We can purchase the book on Amazon. Or if you'd like to come and meet Josh in person, Josh puts on a business boot camp periodically throughout the year and we'll post the link in the description below. Come and meet other entrepreneurs that are also growing their businesses, overcoming these myths and succeeding. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.